Mr. Arthur McLean, thanks for the generous contributions. And bro, thanks for being a friend and a part of this community. Hi there, everyone. My name is Bruce Schwartz. I really want to thank everyone for taking the time to subscribe, to stop by, or just out of curiosity to check out the channel. We're going to do something a little different this time. We're going to be really close, and obviously for research reasons, to see the atmosphere, to see the dust, cloud, smoke, haze, deliberate, natural, or not, on the surface. We're looking at it, and we're not understanding what we're looking at. There's no blur here. We see an oscillation, a wavelength, something oscillating, atmosphere, disturbance, something. Never mind that. Look underneath it. We're looking at a surface. And over the surface, equal with the craters, the tops of the craters, is this cloud or haze that no one's noticing. The moon's not gray. That's what I believe. The moon is just as colorful, if not more, than our own planet. What would Earth look like standing on the moon looking back at Earth? If I was to speculate or hypothesize, I would say that Earth was gray. We'd probably see the same thing. So if there was a human civilization living on the surface of the moon, or alien civilization, which it has to be either one or the other, because there is something, someone up there, would they look back at Earth and say, wow, I wonder if there would be any water on Earth like there is here on the moon, and trees, and vegetation, and atmosphere, and clouds. Probably parks and schools. The way we're looking at the surface overhead, we're not understanding what we're seeing. We don't know ourselves what Earth looks like at this height or level. An amateur astronomer attempts to show the real surface. This is the real color. We're ridiculously close. I'm trying to do ridiculous zooms for, for some of you zoom fanatics like I am. We can't get in close enough, guys. That's for sure. We can get in as close as we can to see still some surface detail. And that's exactly what I'm doing and trying to do for you all and to share it. For me, this is one of the most amazing shots and it's probably the blurriest for some. But it's not blurry. We're looking at a close view of the surface. It's moving, it's wavering around, it's oscillating. Just adapt your eyes. You can clearly see that there are ridges, edges, ledges, whatever, and that there's an enormous, enormous amount of color coming from the surface. Again, we're just along that line of light as the moon phase progresses over the surface of the moon. It reveals and magnifies these beautiful, magnificently, ridiculously tall um, objects. I don't think they're craters. Where do you see a crater? I don't see any craters. I see built objects, structures. Someone's up there and they're building. They're still building. But the size of objects they are building are too small for us to see. And these big objects that are all over the moon for whatever the reason, have remained the same for hundreds, supposedly, if not thousands of years. How can that be? Mary Chrissium, check out the colors. And now the surface has a lot of red on it. And at times, the oscillation, you could see a wavering red electric light on the surface. You could see, um, this is not chromatic aberration. Don't mix up chromatic aberration, fringing light, okay, with surface color. We're looking at a structured surface with colorful objects, whether natural or not, trees or buildings. We can't see them right now. We're not close enough. But that color is on the surface. That's guaranteed. The moon is colorful. What the, what is it with the gray moon? Why do people say the moon is gray? Buy any type of telescope, cheap 
or not. And you will say to yourself, why the heck is everyone posting a gray moon? All right? I can post gray moons. It's not a problem. But for me to post the moon and to have it remain gray, I want you all to know that I have to put it in black and white. Now, why the heck would I do that? That's what should have been said many years ago. The moon's not gray. And when the surface of the moon is seen in gray footage, it's because the color's taken out of it. Why? Why? Of course, in the 60s, they had the perfect excuse, right? I'm not saying they didn't or didn't go, did or did not go. I don't have that proof. It's my word. It would be our word against theirs. But why would they not have mentioned the color? You know, of course, in 69, they did not have color cameras. Well, not the public anyways, right? Again, the Apollo moon landing, Apollo 11, right here. Look at the structuring. Platform-like objects, symmetrical objects. I don't know what they are, but they're very colorful and they're connected to each other. These are constructed. What about these energy sources? Come on. If they did, if they would, if they could land there, it would be to go and confirmed, uh, confirm that there's someone up there or that there was someone up there. So the UFOs we're seeing, if they're human, I doubt it because there are too many of them. So long me, there are too many of them. But again, it could be humans colonized the moon. Maybe the moon was terraformed over many hundreds of years and pockets of oxygen in certain areas. Who knows? There is an atmosphere higher than what uh, they told us. That's what I believe. That's what I heard for the first time when John Lehrer told the world about it. And, you know, with reason. He must have touched some... You know, this guy found out all this information... And at the beginning, I hope I'm not mistaken, but he wasn't using a telescope to get this information first. You know, he knows guys. John Lear knows a hell of a lot of people. And some of those, people's, uh, those people are um, plugs, you know. They know a lot. And they'll tell John things, and John will say it in his own words without mentioning people, but it will help him do his research, whatever. You know, you guys should... Look him up, John Lear. He's on Facebook. And why? Because what I'm finding on the surface of the moon, I found all these things without having an understanding, even before having an understanding about ufology, etc., astrophysics, space, I mean, even astrophotography. But when you listen to what John Lear says is up on the moon, there's many interviews. Well, <laughs> you go get a telescope and then you go up there and then you just, you find signs of uh, lots of them. I assure you, I hear people, and I heard John say that there was even a wheel-like object or wheel-looking object up on the moon. Yeah, I've seen two or three of them. And you know that it's true because when you see it, it strikes you. And you say, well, damn, look at that. It really looks like a wheel, you know? People say that the surface looks like it's ice or glass that we could see underneath it, right? It's reflective. But that is because there are other descending levels. There is some type of veil on the surface. We're use, I'm using that term, veil, because, you know, it could be many things. It could be camouflage. It could be totally natural. But we can't turn away from the fact, everyone, that the moon is actively visited. I'm seeing UFOs pressed up on the surface. Nobody's gotten the UFOs that I found. I'm not trying to brag, but I want you all to understand that the UFOs that are being seen on astronomy channels are, everyone, even me before, are UFOs that are between Earth and the moon, which, by the way, I haven't seen in ages. I honestly have not caught any. I'm very sad I haven't, but I'm happy that I've seen them on the surface. Is there um, a highway on the moon? The UFO traffic, you're damn right there is. Where is it? That's the concern. Everyone's like, where is it? Bruce, document it. Give me the coordinates. Guys, 
the UFOs are everywhere. They're going in different directions. There are different types of UFOs. They're doing different things. They look different. They have different lights. Some have smokes and hazes. Some are clouds. Some are shadows. Some are bright. Some are dark. Some appear, disappear, have lights that light up. And, you know, they're all different. I've even found what looks like clouds on the surface of the moon. And that is definitely something that's, you know, absolutely intriguing. I'm happy, by the way, I'm very grateful for all, there's the Apollo 11 site, for all the subscribers. I really want to thank you all for the support, for coming here to help me because you guys being here, watching my videos, and of course the therapeutic comments, the shares, all that you guys are doing, you guys make this channel possible. And this channel is in no way going to end. Guys, if we keep it up, if I keep getting a lot of views, and if I keep getting a lot of people coming here, it will permit me to be able to do this full time as soon as I can. And when that happens, oh, you're all gonna love that because obviously I'm gonna be able to do a lot more. Yes, it's possible to do a lot more. Look through the videos, you guys. The ones just arriving, you're, you've come to the right place. If you really wanna see real anomalies on the surface, and this is not NASA footage. I want you all to know that this is all my own footage. So if you want to compare NASA footage to mine, you can go right ahead.